Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, my comments uh, after the game were pretty spot on. There was uh, uh, a lot of effort that occurred in that football game. I thought our kids played uh, extremely hard. There was a want to to win, and uh, we just made a couple mistakes. And uh, those mistakes were at uh, every position, every phase of, of football. Uh, just like I said, I commented after on the third down and eight, whenever we jumped off sides and took the sack, uh, should have run the ball and kicked a field goal. And then obviously the trick play, if that would have worked, we'd all been heroes. If it didn't, you're the GOAT. So we're the GOAT. So it is what it is. Uh, it was the right call statistically. Uh, it was it was 90% chance we were going to get the coverage that uh, we anticipated, and we didn't. We got a, a two fire, which they haven't shown, uh, except in the Indiana film, all the way back when he was at Indiana. So, And that was the only time in the game, unfortunately, that we got that coverage. So, um, But if I could go back and do it all over again, I would uh, kill the play and get out of it and not put uh, our young football player in that position. Because to make a long story short, I put him in a bad position. He didn't know how to throw the ball away yet, and uh, that's on me, 100%. But uh, the uh, thing that I was encouraged with last week is uh, the week of the Tennessee game, we did not practice hard at all, not even remotely like an organization that needs to practice to win. And I thought last week we finally did practice well. The intent was well, uh, but the attention to detail and in doing things uh, in and out of, uh, of practice to translate to Saturday um, did not occur. I received two text messages, uh, one from an offensive leader and one from a defensive leader. And in a nutshell, it said that uh, every single thing that you preach about during the week showed up on Saturday. The positive that we saw on the, uh, on the practice field translated right over to, uh, to the game experience. And the negatives that translated, we saw in practice also. So uh, as painful as this is, um, I think this is a, uh, the one positive that's going to come, out about, come, up, come about it is uh, we've got our players' attention. We got our players' attention in regards to practicing hard and our attention to details uh, during the week will give us a much better chance of winning. And I've been stressing to our team the, uh, the importance of uh, those details if you, if you do them in practice, there's a nine, you know, you got 90% chance you're going to execute it in the game. There's not, nothing's 100%. But when you're a once in a while guy during practice, uh, you're going to be a once in a while guy during the game. And that's basically what happened in a nutshell. Uh, extremely excited about this week. Another really tough opponent. Uh, this is not a typical uh, FCA team. Uh, this is a this is a big time uh, big time program. I think they're super well coached in all phases. I watched all three phases. I think uh, they're talented, and they're super disciplined and super well coached. So we're going to have our hands full. I told our kids we're going to have to play our best game to get a win. Scott, is a win or a loss like that tougher than some of the other blowout games, if you will, because you're so close against such a good team, and, and that could have been the moment. Is yeah, that harder? no doubt about it. They're all hard, but that one and uh, was really difficult just because of uh, how far we've come. And uh, if you watch from year one to now, it's not even close. And uh, we still got holes. I mean, we still got to fill some holes. Once we fill those holes, we're going to feel really uh, confident and uh, feel really good about our football team. But I was, I was really sad for the kids more than anything. Uh, I thought they played their tails off. All of them did. And uh, they made mistakes, uh, but it was great effort. But uh, in football, you know, it's the team that makes the mo most mistakes, and we made the most mistakes, and that's why we lost the football game. But yes, I was, uh, I was shot as long as well as our staff, as well as our team. But uh, we have a 24-hour rule here, one way or the other. If we win or if we lose, we got 24 hours to let it go. So all our focus now is on Murray State. What was the response like in practice? What did you see? Uh, they're locked in. We're going to find out tomorrow. Today is, you know, you're running around in basketball gear today, so. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Tuesday is always a huge indicator. Uh, Wednesday is a huge indicator. There were some things that, uh, that I addressed on Thursday that was just complete immaturity and a lack of detail, and it showed up. And I'll, uh, I remember walking off the field, and actually a player overheard me. And he, lo he walked up to me after the game and goes, you were right on Thursday. And uh, we addressed it. We cleaned it. But uh, everything matters. Uh, winning is hard. It is tough. 
and every single detail is uh, is a key to winning the game. I know there's no moral victories, but Matt gets offensive player of the week. He has a great game. Small victories like that, how do you see that building his confidence and, and getting you guys over that hump? Yeah, and uh, like I always say, I do think he played uh, at times really well in the uh, – in our last ball game against South Alabama, I thought he played better in the Tennessee game. There was opportunities out here um, that were missed that he knows that could have changed the difference in the game. And uh, that's where I always love coaching the quarterback position. Everyone says, rah, 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 you did great. And then you're, you're sitting and you're watching the film and you're going, okay, there's five or six or seven things that could have really made the difference. But uh, I thought he played really, really well these last two weeks. Like I said, uh, we found some things in the South Alabama game that we would love to have back, as well as every single person on our team, including myself, wants a few things back. So uh, when you lose a game like that, you always look uh, particularly close at uh, how you could have made a difference, and he would tell you the same thing. When it comes to these really close games, I mean, final seconds, is this a thing where a team can learn in practice Monday through Friday how to win games like that, or is this something that they have to experience and go through those tough moments to get through? Well, um, I think you got to experience them. Obviously, we put a ton of pressure on our players, uh, but uh, I think the moment, you know, the, the, the learning lesson is that everyone walked out of the locker room and knew why we didn't finish that game. And uh, I know the three plays that I would love to have back, but we also, the players know what occurred during the week. The, the intent was awesome, but the attention to detail and the immaturity at times was not. And, um, as much as this sucks, I wanted those kids to win in the most imaginable way for them, more importantly. We're going to look back, and as painful as this is, we're going to look back and go, this is really going to help our program down the road, as much as it stinks. And trust me, I, I hate losing more than anything, but I just know that when you got a young team the way we, that we do have a young team, they need to learn, and sometimes learning the hard way is the most important way. You mentioned the improvements in practice, the experience at Tennessee, the lessons learned this past week. What are those next steps kind of going into Saturday? Uh, detail during the week, without a doubt. Uh, things that we know, if we put in something new and, uh, and we bust on that, that's on us as coaches. We need to, to make sure that that play is game ready for Saturday or we throw it out. But the, the basics, the, uh, the fundamentals of the offense and the defense and the special teams, our core of what we do, if we're busting things that we've been working on for years around here now, that's, that's, you know, that's how you lose. And that's what occurred uh, in practice last week. Things that were our core, um, we made mistakes on, and it showed up in the game. We have time for two more questions. Coach, Andrew Bench caught that first touchdown for you guys the other day and um, you know, position swap in the offseason. It seems like he's earned Matt's trust and your trust relatively quickly. You know, what's he done you know, within practices or whatever it may be to earn that? Well, I think uh, we made a good decision by moving him over. Uh, our defensive line is extremely talented, and uh, he would have played on defense. There's no question about it, but uh, we had a hole there. We needed a, a true why. His body type fits it. and. Uh, He's working really hard right now on just the things that we were just talking about, the details, the every single thing matters. And uh, uh, I think as soon as he gets that uh, mentality and as soon as uh, um, he figures that out, he's going to be a, a very, very good tight end in this conference. He's a good player now, but we need to get him to be really good. You talked on Saturday about the running game, and it's no question the last couple of weeks it's yeah. been, been very, very quiet. Um, what have they done today, you know, at least for any kind of walkthrough or any kind of steps forward, you know, within that? Because uh, obviously, like you said, kind of needs to step up. Yeah, I don't know how much it is mentally right now. Um, if you really watch the tape, there's not a ton of uh, uh, missed assignments in the running game. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, some strength, uh, some age, some experience, and, um, you know, I can handle that right now. And we know, we know that that's our weakness right now. And, uh, with time, that will be our strength. But right now, uh, there's not a lot of missed assignments, which my hat's off to those guys. It's, uh, it goes to a lot of – there's a lot of young guys that are playing positions that old guys need to be playing. And uh, we're being as creative as all we can as coaches to help them um, and to protect Matt. And uh, we'll have to continue to do that for this year. And then uh, as soon as we get older, we get stronger, 
uh, that run game will kick up and obviously you see how we can throw the ball. And uh, once we're able to run the ball the way that we want to run the ball, uh, along with uh, how we can throw it, um, it's going to be a really good offense. But uh, I wish that I could sit here and go, it was missed assignments, it was that, it was this. It's, you know, the guy's a freshman and he's playing against a 22-year-old dude. You know, and we're not 22 years. That offensive line needs to be 21 and 22-year-old dudes. That's how the, that's the formula of the MAC, and we could say what we want. The Big Ten, the SEC, all those great linemen are older, and uh, that's just where we're at. And uh, we're going to find ways to to help those guys. And uh, I'm proud of their effort, though. Those guys are selling out. They're giving it every single thing they have. Just uh, there's some things that uh, aren't in place right now with age.